Greetings! Retro Zoltan here. Every once in a while, someone donates a handheld console to the show, and I'm extremely thankful. And by the looks of this one, as thankful as I am, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be ripping this thing apart. So, Vito, thank you for the donation. I'm pretty sure this is going to be an interesting experience. <laughs> So here we are, the X12, a huge screened monstrosity that looks similar to the Nintendo Switch. China distributors have been pushing out a great deal of what I can only call the X-Series handheld emulators. There are many flavors, including the X7 that I also happen to have in my inventory. This one, as far as I can see, is the largest and has about the largest screen. Before opening this box, I'm already on high alert when I see that there's no company name on the device anywhere. That's a huge red flag that this is going to be disappointing. The only thing in its place where you expect the company name is just the words Game Player. This infuriates me, honestly, because it's clearly made this way so everyone and their mom can just go ahead and sell this thing like it's their own. Just looking at AliExpress, you can buy the X12 from a variety of companies. Some of my favorites are the Game One Store, the New Current Department Store, the Good Shipping Gaming Store, and the Shop 110-226-5283 Store. I wish I was kidding. So in my case, it comes with the console itself, an instruction booklet, and an old school AV cable. I'll be checking that feature later. I believe it it's also supposed to come with charging cables and headphones, but your results may vary. The weight of the system feels okay, I guess. It's heavier than expected. Something about weight in a handheld device makes it feel less cheap, you know? The front of the X12 sports a D-pad that isn't really a D-pad. It's just four separate buttons. I've seen these before, and it certainly makes a difference in gameplay. Not a good one. And I'm fairly sure I'm not going to be doing any Hadoukens easily on this thing. Hadouken! The analog sticks, or rocker, controls feel even worse. Just moving them about makes them feel like I'm going to break it. I'm fairly sure I'll be ignoring these during gameplay. The A, B, X, Y buttons are labeled at least, and match the Nintendo Switch if you're used to this button arrangement. The select, start, and escape buttons are boring, but good enough, I suppose. Having an escape button is at least a helpful addition to the controls, so I won't say too much negative here. Of course, the biggest thing on the front is the screen, which they boast is 7 inches. I was sus that maybe they were exaggerating, or maybe it was just the glass that was 7, but it's surprisingly a truly 7 inches. The resolution they state, however, is 800 by 400, which by today's standards isn't great. But if it doesn't emulate anything exciting, it may not matter anyway. Jury is still out on that. The top sports two trigger buttons that have a hard, clear plastic, reminiscent of what I have seen on the PAP-K units back in the day. They're acceptable, I guess, but if your fingers aren't in the correct spots, they get uncomfortable fairly quickly. There's also a power off button, volume buttons, my least favorite of all volume control types, a mini USB USB charger port, a tiny hole which I'm assuming is a microphone, also there's a slider on off switch and an AV port to connect to your television. And on the back are dual speakers, which is nice, and a camera lens for making home videos. Imagine filming a kid's play on this thing, and that's it. Nothing else here unless if you try to figure out what the holes in the bottom of this thing is for. Maybe tying a lanyard to it so you won't lose it if things get out of control. Probably more cosmetic, if anything, I suppose. Okay, so let's turn this thing on and see what's going to happen here. So seeing Tekken screens in the beginning is promising, but then it sort of looks like a PSP Vita menu. Kind of. I'm not much of a stickler for screen resolution, but at our Already looks blurry to me. Maneuvering around the menu rewards you with a super annoying clicking sound that makes you feel like your system is running slower than it is. Not a good start. At least the ability to change it to turn it off is there, and that it stays that way from that point on. Points to that for sure. Something annoying that you can turn off forever. The menu shows all the things you can do on this thing, which at least makes it a little useful. The browser icon is not what you think. It only lets you look around on the internal 16 gig this thing brags about. I can't see anyone taking pictures or using a stopwatch, but I can see it being mildly entertaining if you're a kid with nothing better to do. Moving down brings you to what I assume are the recommended games. Icons, if you will, of hand-picked games that I'm assuming work pretty well here. These appear to be Final Burn Alpha and Neo Geo games that usually run on just about everything. Moving down again brings you more of the same, with some confusing things here. So if you click game, it sort of takes you to this weird menu that I've seen before. It's a bit awkward, but it works well enough to find your game and play it. The DIR list is a bit of a kick in the teeth though. It's just a bunch of games in a big pile and it's not in alphabetical order. Well, not at first. And then it goes from A to Godzilla and that's what you get. Excited to play Street Fighter? Too bad. It's not on there. 
Or is it? If you go to the GBA icon, you get another 12,400 games. Why aren't these included in the regular games icon? No idea. And then there are repeats. Lots of them. In fact, once you reach 124 games, it starts over. That's the same games repeated exactly 100 times. So what about the 3D arcade game icon? It's another completely new list that's all Final Burn Alpha and Neo Geo games, mostly, that also repeats 100 times again. So it's a mess, clearly. Unorganized and just confusing. But how's the gameplay? It's a little strange loading up your games on this thing, but it does work. And playing your own games you provide on your SD is even more confusing. Once you put the SD in, you have to navigate to Game, then Option Game, then DIR List, then Card Directory. Once you're there, you'll finally see your stuff, provided you get the file extensions correct and that sort of thing. The directions are lousy at telling you what file extensions work on this, but I believe I found them all. My system only came with NES, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, and Final Burn Alpha games. I'm guessing this varies depending on where you get it from. Regardless, if you add your own games, you can also squeeze out a few more systems, including Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Super Nintendo, Genesis, and PlayStation. Do you want to play PlayStation games on this thing? Gameplay is rough at best. Some games lock up, but if you're lucky, gameplay will just be super slow. All other systems are a mixed bag once you get up to 16-bit. Some games work great, while others drag along. The buttons representing the D-pad and other buttons, as expected, just feel terrible. A lot of the time I'm pressing them and nothing is happening. Or I keep trying angles that just aren't there. It's just not the gaming experience I'm hoping for. But for this price, I shouldn't complain too much. The rocker joysticks are not elegant at all, and feel weird, and just have to be ignored. Normally I would say it's better than nothing, but in this case, I say nothing is better. I tried really hard to find out if there was any custom firmware for this thing. There's room for so much improvement in the software, but there was none to be found. There's an updated official firmware, but it still doesn't give you much of an advantage. Even a simple menu overhaul, something like Nick and Friends Super Menu for the PAP-K would make this better, but the love needed for the X12, or any X-Series handheld device for that matter, isn't there. Sorry X12. So let's try the AV cable it comes with. Connecting to your TV is okay, I guess. It has the AV cable, so why not try it, right? It's not HD, obviously, but it's better than nothing. It works. Not much to say about it. Doesn't seem worth it, especially on the X12, because the giant screen is already available to you. If you have one of these, or still think it's worth it, your best bet to make this the best gaming experience is just to load up the games off your own SD organized in a way that works for you. Something less confusing. Something that shows all the systems and call it a day. I would stay away from PlayStation games that are fast-paced, Otherwise, you're just going to get heartburn. With that said, it can play game. Just lower any expectations of quality. If you don't buy it cheap, you're going to feel ripped off. So please be careful for those who are marking this thing up past $25. And that's all I have to say about the X12, and the entire X series for that matter. Special thanks to everyone for watching, and of course your support. And obviously, a special thanks for your donations. I'll see you next time. Bye.